<laughs> Fantastic. Well, cheers, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Water Cooler. Uh, this is a, this is an exciting show, Chris. Uh, you know, for me personally, uh, it's been sort of fun to watch this this conversation evolve. Uh, the importance of a website, right? Uh, I think for a while, many people kind of started to have doubts on whether websites would actually exist in the future, right? All with all these social media sites, people thought they can sort of you know have these social media sites without actually having their own hub online. That is not the case, right? I think we've proven that. So. Uh, this whole show uh, is all about building the perfect website, and we're going to talk about what makes a website great, what things to avoid, and give you a ton of great resources. So, Chris, I want to welcome you to the show. I'm glad you're actually here today, and I was getting a little bit nervous, making me sweat. But uh, let's let's uh, tell all of our new visitor, you know, new uh, viewers this week, yeah. what's the Wallet Cooler all about? Sure. Well, cheers, everyone. I'm drinking a Fat Tire IPA. You know, we drink a little bit, we cuss a little bit, we talk about internet marketing, we talk about design and technology and mobile and social, but the reason we do the show is because your broker doesn't. You've never taken a class at your own company on building the perfect website. You can't even go to your broker right now and say, hey, who should I use if I need a good responsive design site? And so a lot of the conversations that you guys need to be a part of, there's nowhere else to be a part of them. And so we noticed that agents, and actually, if you guys are on Twitter, tweet this out for me. Agents go to offices for two reasons, to pick up a paycheck or to quit. Pound water cooler. So we do it online. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that's, and that's, and just a real quick house clean, clean item. Pound water cooler on, on Twitter is, uh, is we can join the discussions here. We got our, we got our first, first awesome tweet from uh, uh, Joanne. She says, she says, got me a Chris Smith size cocktail. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. You know, it's been funny, Jimmy. I'm at the Remax show in Vegas. Yeah. And uh, I've had like four people come over and give me a beer and tell me how much they love the water cooler. I was in the middle of a presentation for Dot Loop. And a guy handed me like a vodka soda. So I think we're on to something, dude. If all this does is get us free drinks everywhere we go, I'm doing it every week. <laughs> well, cl clear clearly they didn't watch the first show. Yeah. Uh, so hey, listen, we got Greg Fish on the line. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Greg on just a little bit here. But before I do, Chris, why don't we just start off? Describe to me the typical real estate agent website. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> so. I, you know, typically it makes me throw up in my mouth a little bit, Jimmy. Is that what you want me to say? Is that why people well, tune in? Specific, I mean, I, specifically, you know, what's like, you know, what, what are you seeing out there? Because right, because we're we're, well, we're I, you know, the, the, my talk uh, at Remax was mastering digital marketing, and yeah. what I asked people, I challenged them. I said, "How many salespeople have you met online?" Yeah. Right? How many car salespeople? How many insurance salespeople? And what happens is if you go to like Lexus.com or Zillow.com or people that kind of get how the web works, they don't showcase the people who sell the product, they showcase the product. So you can spin the car around, change the color, figure out the price, and they give you so much that it then makes you feel like you need to go finish the deal with them. And so the typical agent website has a template that's ugly. It doesn't uh -huh. work on a mobile device. Their home search is usually uglier than their website. They usually put a big picture of themselves in the header, and they say they're the best fucking agent in their market. That's the typical website. And, and you know, the thing is too, is it, which which is which is I think I think important to reiterate is what percentage of consumers right now don't trust people when they have a bad website. I can't remember the stat on it. Yeah, I got it. So uh, Derek Halpern from Social Triggers. He's one of our favorite guys. We're going to talk about copywriting later. And he's an awesome writer. People are hating on my... Greg, what happened? They got you on the beats? They were People are hating beats? on my beats out there, dude. I can't believe it. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Well, hey, it's all good. You know what? Jimmy had like a World of Warcraft headset. There, there, is, there is no proof of that. There I is mean, no proof of that. I kind that of show was not recorded. <laughs> yeah. So, no, so, so, what was your question, Jimmy? I'm sorry. My question is... Let's put it in context. Oh, yeah, 94%. I got you. Yeah. They did this uh, huge sample, and they, they, were, they were testing people that go to, like, medical websites. So yeah. whether, to, whether it's to find a doctor or to buy Viagra, right? It was like a medical website they were sending people to. Okay. And then at the end, they said, why didn't you like this website? And they, the number one reason was that, that they cited was distrust. I didn't trust this website. 
And so the answer that they got more than anything else was that 94% of the people that said that they would never use that company cited the design of the site as the reason over even like the words or the copy. Well, you know, to, and, 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 it, and it's fascinating, you know, and anyone who's on Twitter right now just tweet, tweeting that out, 94% of people don't trust you if you have your bad, a bad design website. Yeah, ta yeah. tag at Derek Halpern, D-E-R-E-K Halpern, H-A-L-P-E-R-N. Well, yeah, we'll tweet it out there, guy's name. I don't know how to spell it, but uh, you know, it's funny because on the on that same point about words on a page, right? We put yeah. so much emphasis on you know cramming in paragraphs yeah. and paragraphs of our our, our USPs, right? But yeah. we know the guy. We'll talk about him a little bit later on. But Jacob Nielsen, the the the, the master, the grandfather of web usability, talks about this. He says only twenty percent of all words on a web page are actually read. You know, when yeah. you're when it's over a certain threshold, so you're, yeah. you're putting all this work in it, like no one's reading. It's the stuff almost like writing. a YouTube video. You know, you do a ten minute video and people watch two minutes of it. But one, one here's one great tip for people. Yeah, there's no such thing as a home seller. You know, you guys have a tab that says buyers sellers. Well, if I'm not listed with you, I'm an owner. I'm not a seller. A seller's already under contract, folks. So when you're writing emails to home sellers. That's a pretty damn stupid word to use. They are homeowners who may want to sell. So what I would do is get rid of all this seller stuff and start focusing on homeowners. Do you own a home? Would you like to know the value? Do you own a home? Would you like to see what it's worth? Do you own a home? Now, we know the reason that we want to give them all that is because we do want to sell their home. But yeah. at the end of the day, Jimmy, is that not a big kind of a takeaway for our industry? Like there's no such thing as a home seller. If they are, you're kind of breaking the rules by marketing to them, right, Greg? I mean, you're not supposed to market the listing. So there's no well, home sellers to market to. Sure. Yeah, and before you pull, because we're trying to do a better job, actually, host, I'm trying to do a better job hosting the show. Let me introduce Greg for them, those of them who don't know who Greg is. Uh, Greg, you you is it Fort? You serve as Fort Worth, Texas. You recently got a, uh, I guess, awarded or I don't know what, what we want to call it. You won the award for hundred most influential people in real estate. Uh, you're a young guy. Uh, you've been in real estate for how long now? It's six years, Jimmy, and I actually just turned thirty. So I don't know if you can call me young anymore. Uh, I think. Well, well what's uh, your, yeah, what's you're, uh, yeah, you're, okay. Sorry, you're not young. You're twenty eight years younger than the average <laughs> realtor. Yeah, yeah, and you know I'm younger than you, so it's it's weird calling you young, but still, you know the point is is that you you are a younger generation realtor. Now, this just when you first started real estate, was there a strong emphasis put on you know having a great website? Because six years ago, what were 2006, 2007 or so? You know, did you know? Because obviously, we're a decade behind the rest of the world in the real estate industry. So at that point when you joined. What was sort of the you know sort of the advice you were given by your your first broker? Were they saying get on the web? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yes, I'm in Fort Worth, which is not Dallas, so always love to clear that up from the beginning. Uh, we're 30 miles from Dallas, but you know what? I actually went to my first broker's website the other day, and it's the same damn coming soon page that was there in 2007, <laughs> dude. So as far as being on the web, I mean. If a coming soon page with a couple of phone numbers is being on the web, hell yeah, he was there. Um, <laughs> but there wasn't really any advice from that broker. The next brokers I worked for, same site from 2009, but yeah. those guys have a really strong organic following, so yeah. it kind of works for them. They kind of do their own thing. You know what's so, funny, Greg? Shouldn't coming soon be like a porn site, not a realtor site? Just like, <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 you throw you throw me off here. <laughs> so, so, all right. So here, so here's my question though: Is do you find this is sort of like as an agent, you know, it's sort of your responsibility to to figure this out because obviously your broker's not doing it. Well, he's so, a broker, Jimmy. So we got to get that right. Greg's the broker of his company now. So we we well, want to make sure we get that right. Yeah. Sure. But, but still, yeah. owner operate like I'm practicing real estate. Yeah, you still sell. You're not yeah. a traditional yeah. broker. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 the, you know that being said, let me just change my entire question. Uh, you know, right now for you, what are you doing with you know the people you work with to basically instill the same beliefs that you have about the importance of the websites and how to really build a great website? Yeah, totally. I mean, Chris hit on it earlier, kind of in the introduction. I mean, I think mobile is very important for myself, and the the last thing I'm going to do is say what's important for everyone else. But for me, the marketing that we're doing is friendly to mobile. 
So if I'm doing marketing that's friendly to mobile and people are on mobile, our site's going to look good on mobile and operate on mobile. So that's number one. The second one is like it's got to look good. It's got to be yeah. designed well. There's got to be good images, relevant images, and then call to actions. And that's it. That's all you know. I focus on good, strong content uh, about the area and about what we do. So def define looks good because that's very generic, right? You know, when you say looks good, what are some of the characteristics of a of a, a good looking website to you? I, it's almost easier to say what doesn't look good, and it, it's kind of a subjective thing. Um, sure. I, I mean, really, like strong, high res images relevant to the area, and then so not know, clip like, art. Say again. Not clip art then? <laughs> no, not clip art. Don't stop going to <laughs> iStock Photo. I mean, get a photographer to take some good pictures of the area. Hey, Greg, let me stop you real quick. Yeah. Let me give one quick tip. So this idea that photography is critical is, is really important. Uh, what, I, what I've started to see, Jimmy, is the mega photo, right, where it's basically a really simple design and one big, beautiful image. Yeah. And, and the reason that this is important is, you know, if you think about the way that a lot of websites are, are, like what Greg said, is one big photo, right? Like, I think the problem, Jimmy, is that people think more is more. What's your website, Greg, so people can look at it right now? Because you practice what you preach, and it's awesome on mobile. What is it? Yeah, it's FW, like Fort Worth, so FWlocal.com. Okay, cool. And and so I think the, the design factor, Jimmy, yeah, and I, I said this on stage today. You're competing with Apple on design, because if I use my iPad all day and I use Evernote all day and I use Twitter all day and I use Facebook all day, it you know that raises my expectation of design across the web. Mm -hmm. and, and so, agents are competing with Apple. And like, if I go to Apple.com, everybody go right now to Apple.com. I bet they have a big fucking picture and a clear call to action. And I don't even need to go there to know that. And so this this mega photo idea I think is big. If you go to go to Zillow.com, they have like a mega well, photo. Uh, uh, real, real quick, a great one is Air, Airbnb. Yeah, right? that's our favorite. Yeah. Airbnb.com. Mega photo, super simple. And what I think it does, Greg, is it makes the site still really beautiful, but it but it also keeps the focus on the search. Where I was heading with the picture idea. Because yeah. you're saying, go out and have somebody take some great pictures. They won't do that shit, Greg. Sorry. So what we have to do instead is if you go to Getty Images, not iStock Photo, go to GettyImages.com and spend about like five or $800 on a photo that was taken of Fort Worth or of Miami. You know, that is yeah. absolutely insane. We, we buy those for some of our clients because they're not going to go take them. You know, it, it, so listen for five or eight hundred dollars. So, so yeah, I agree with you. If you want to check if, if it exists, then you should just take advantage of it right now. But for five five hundred eight hundred dollars, you can hire a pretty damn yeah, good. Yeah, you can photo. hire. I've I've paid less than that for some really yeah. good. Yeah, you know what? Lisa did that too, Jimmy. If you guys go to LiveLoveCharlotte.com, Live yeah. Love Charlotte, Lisa actually had a photographer from Atlanta drive over to Charlotte. And, and take like 10 or 12 amazing photos. So if you've never had, you know, a picture taken for your website and you're just using the ones you got, you know, that's kind of like if you keep the articles they give you. Like, you know, usually I had a lady on Twitter now, Jimmy, saying, I'm stuck with my broker's crappy site that they gave me. You know, every brand and broker gives their agents a site. So what I, I would like to cover that too. Like, why can't I just use the one that I got from Remax or Keller? Why can't I just use the the Sotheby's one? Why do I need my own anyway? I think that's worth worth touching on a little bit. Well, why why do you need your own business card, right? Like, it's like you want you want you want to brand yourself in some capacity. You want to stand out against the competition. Now, you know, I love Remax. I love Keller Williams. The great companies, but you are competing against everyone. You know, they're, they're part of the same organization, but they are your competition. Yeah, you know what I said on stage? I said a brokerage offering a website to an agent is like a hotel offering a bed to their guests. It, it's just something you have to do. But meanwhile, yeah. like I'd love to know on Twitter, are any of you converting any real business from your broker-provided site? Town Water Cooler, let me know. Hey, Jimmy, yeah. on, the, uh, on the second part of the design thing, something that I'm kind of taking to heart and I'm trying to toy with, Sure. It actually, like the text. So, like we kind of talked about mobile and kind of responsive, sort of, and yep. images. But I think the thing that people are really missing right now 
is the way that your text looks on different devices. So like a lot of times when I see the mobile optimized sites, they have the smallest freaking text you could ever see. Don't, don't get Chris started on that. Crap, dude, I can't <laughs> see it if I'm just like. Here, here, here it is. So here, here, let, me, let me give you guys a quick one. 16 is the new 12, and we're not talking about your dress size, okay? <laughs> we're talking about your font size. And so one of the other things, Greg, like I'm a huge fan of like, what is it like? <laughs> Helvetica newbie, what is that? I can't, I can't pronounce. I, well, my, my 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 new favorite one is is Sorts Mill Gaudi. It's yeah. Sorts Mill. It looks but, like. But anyways, go ahead. But, but the point is, like most websites have Arial twelve font out of the box, or, or Times New Roman. Yeah, huge opportunity to go bigger font, better font, and, and know, that alone stands out. Let, let me let me tweet this out, guys. There's a, there's, a, there's a site called The Rules of Three, which is this UK site that does copywriting, and they have absolutely beautiful typography. And you, if, you, if anyone's ever watched the video of Steve Jobs when he gave the uh, uh, the graduation speech for, I can't remember, was it was at Harvard or it may have been another college, he talked about his early days at, uh, in college when he actually took a, like this uh, calligraphy class, right? And he just sort of sat in on it. And he talked about the importance of typography and how it was sort of very influential for him actually creating uh, you know, at the, at the Apple computers uh, and was one of the biggest you know, differentiation points for him. So, you, you know, typography... Again, what makes a great site, just kind of really quickly recap, we're talking about, you know, the importance of mobile. We're also talking the importance of, of beautiful typography. Uh, and definitely check out that that site. It's called The Rules of Three. I'll tweet it out right now, Pound Water Cools. You got and that's a really inexpensive way to make your website awesome. Cause that ain't going to cost you $600, exactly. No, it's great. So, you know, on that well, same note, speed. My point was, though, really quickly, it's not even yeah. just, like, Chris hit on it, like the actual, you know, size. I mean, you have to be able to to see it and read it, and so I just think that's a big. Yeah, go to if you guys go to Forbes.com on your phone, the font's like super jacked up, high, you know, number. And I love it, and uh, you can even see a lot of the apps, Greg, and a lot of good mobile sites. They'll have like a small A, a medium A, a big A, so you can quickly increase the size of the font if you need to. So yeah. I, I think these these are little things that you know we kind of obsess about, but I don't even know if our industry talks about it all, Jimmy. Ever. Yeah, and again, this is ba this is basic stuff, but you, we have to think about the 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 impact this has, right? We put our web address on every single piece of marketing material that we get out there: direct mail, email, our Facebook, our Twitter profiles, right? We, don't, we so it, it's it's everywhere. So these little things, when they you start to compound them actually matter. Now let's talk about speed because this is something that really just annoys me is people don't really care about speed. Uh, Greg, do you have any advice in terms yeah. of you know just sort you know tools people can use to try to test their website speed? Yeah. Uh, totally. or on the same you, note, you don't go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to test your speed. You have to be aware of your images. Images take up a ton of space. Uh, hosting affects speed. I mean, my site, especially since I'm not using IDX, I get a limited amount of usage of my site, but I'm still using a premium host. So my site speed is fast. I mean, it doesn't take you five seconds to load. So yeah. I guarantee you, Chris is going to eat his Doritos and talk about Zmod. <laughs> He's going to say something about Zmod. I know it. No, but... I'm going to talk about how to go mo. Okay, how... there you go. Uh, yeah, because if you go to howtogomo.com, and you put your URL in for your site, it'll tell you how fast it loaded. And what Google says, if it's if it's more than three seconds, you're pretty much screwed uh, because people don't like to like stare at their phone. Here's a good thing for you guys to remember: the most popular button on the internet and on your phone is the back button. That that is the most pressed button on the internet. And so as soon as that little yeah. timer. As soon as that little fucking Blackberry hourglass motherfucker starts spinning and you have to take your battery out and put it back in, I'm not going back to your site ever. <laughs> yeah, and that, so so how to go mo looks great for just for mobile testing. Uh, is there another one, another one, Jimmy? Is there one they can test their desktop load speeds? I know our developer Andrew obsesses about speed. We're, yeah, we're get a test on their desktop. It's yeah, I'll tweet, I'll tweet that right now. It's web. Well, I, I Greg, I'm not sure what you use, but we use uh, webpagetest.org. Okay, there you go. By all, by, is that the one you use as well? Yeah, tools.pingdom. Yeah, both tools.pingdom, webpagetest.org. 
you know, and I, I, I've, I've read enough articles about SEO to, to know that they, Google's tracking this stuff, right? Because what they care about at the end of the day is the experience of their, of their users. And if your website's really slow, that actually is impacting how Google ranks you. It's crazy to think about that, but you know, Google's a really smart company, and they're going to put these things in consideration. So let's 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 move on, guys. We know what we know. Some of these the the, the basics here. We know your site's got to be you know it's got to adjust the screen size that you're going to be using. Uh, you got to have beautiful imagery, you know, Getty images, hire a photographer, beautiful typography. I tweeted that out. Uh, tech test your web page's speed, see how fast it is. Uh, let's talk. Let's go with sort of the basics here, because this is a question we get all the time. CMSs, right? We to every single person out there right now is talking about the importance of creating a blog, right? There's a few different platforms out there. So, Chris, let's let's just dive into this. You know, what are some of the things? What are some of the platforms you recommend, and why? Well, I think everybody recommends WordPress, but I don't think that they should. I, I just think they're doing it because everyone else recommends it, and they don't really know what else to say. <clears throat> they don't really want to sound stupid and say like use Drupal or something like that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that. At the end of the day, I'm not going to answer your question because the platform doesn't matter. The platform doesn't matter. It doesn't okay. matter at all. I don't give a fuck what they use. Next. Greg, same question. <laughs> CMS? I mean, dude, I've been on WordPress for three years. So I've, I've checked out some of the other guys. Um, I've seen them. I've seen um, Squarespace. I yeah. never really figured it out. I mean, I'm basically... I self-publish, but I have um, a part-time developer that helps me make a lot yeah, of Yeah, but Greg, hold on a second. Hold on a second, dude. Screw that. How many hours have you personally spent on your website? Over every website over, you know. No, the new one, the new one, the new one. Oh, not too much, man. Mostly publishing, but probably probably a solid, you know, 50 to 75 yeah. hours. Th this is the problem, Greg. Yeah. WordPress kind of sucks if you don't know how to do that. You know, I know Ricardo's watching right now, and I'm going to keep it real. When you download a theme for WordPress, it never freaking looks like what you bought. We need to talk about that, Jimmy. So you see this beautifully designed theme, and then you buy it, Greg, and then you turn it on, and it's like, what? Yeah, so you, can't buy my, you can't buy my site, Chris. You can't, like pay 50 bucks and then you have my site. Yeah, but that's the thing, Greg. This is what we have to focus on what are agents yeah. really doing. They're buying websites thinking they're going to look great and then they turn them on and they look shitty. And they have to add the images, add the IDX and, and it almost was a waste of money even if it was like a $20 theme, you know, they may as well just spend that money on coffee or something. Well, you know, on that on that same note, like this idea of because well, first off, to your point, like it it, it does matter what CMS they use. You can't say it doesn't matter because it, it certainly does matter that you want to have you know at least a popular CMS and certainly Tumblr or WordPress, whatever it is. But on that same note, let's talk about this idea of doing it yourself versus. Hey, real quick, Jimmy, real quick. I'm sorry. What? Let like, somebody on Twitter, my friend Rosemary. I love her. She watches all our stuff. Uh, I think that's her name. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. You know what? I am such a I am not a fan of your Twitter name being like your like moving to Fort Bragg. I I'm sorry. I, you know, Greg, yours is like fish real estate. Oh, dude, I know, dude. Trust you know, me. My, my boy it. Miami Beach is watching. Kevin, I love you, but your shit should be like Kevin T. Um, you know, and, and so anyway, so Rosemary had a question, Jimmy. Her site loaded in seven seconds. Now what? What do I do to fix it? What do we do when we fix ours? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you, you know what? You find out what's what's making your site slow. I mean, you can find out using those tools. It's probably a combination of web host, and it's probably she has a ton of data on there. That she here, here, on there. here, here, here's my advice, Rosemary. I love Rosemary. Uh, you know, she's she's uh, a Frugal Club member. Um, hire a professional. Find somebody that's a professional that can actually speed up your site. Because this this just isn't something you should be doing, frankly. Um, you know, making updates to your site, keeping your WordPress site up to date, checking on the site speed. You should hire professional. You should know. You should know what's important, but you got to hire a pro. It's you know, because the, the, at the end of the day, this goes back to our, you know the next sort of point here I want to talk about, which is this idea of do we do it ourselves or do we outsource? Now, Greg, you kind of are doing. A, you're a little bit of a hybrid, right? You're doing yeah. a little bit yourself and outsourcing it. But you know, for the average agent. You know what, what? What do they have any chance of succeeding by actually taking on all this responsibility? Dude, I spent a year probably learning how to publish on WordPress, and the only reason I was able to do that is I was working on another project as I was setting up my company. So I actually had that time 
build in there, and that's been valuable to me because now I know what to ask of people. But sure. if I had to do that over again in 2013, dude, I mean, that is a year of selling real estate that I'm just throwing down the drain. So I value what I went through, but it was only unique circumstances that allowed me to do that. Jimmy, let me tell you my story, dude. Me and Steve, when we started Tech Savvy Agent, we bought Thesis yeah. on WordPress, and it was an absolute nightmare to do it yourself, even though they have this amazing DIY community. Uh, actually, yep. if you go to DIYthemes.com, you can see it. It's amazing. They'll tell you how to do everything. And I freaking did what you did, Greg. I spent like six months trying to build this thing. And, you know, Steve made a little header for us. And, you know, I said <laughs> it where if you hovered over a button, it'd turn green instead of black. And, you know, the funny thing is we never got more than like about 11 to 1,200 page views. I hired Ken Granger from Arranging Pixels, now Brandco. Brand he code, built yeah. us a brand new custom site, Tech Savvy Agent. First day, we had 3,000 page views. So if you don't think design matters, there you go. And, and that site's still up, techsavvyagent.com. And I think it actually still looks great today. That's a four-year-old site now. So it does. What do you guys think now? Like, Clearly, there are other people in the space who are going to say, well, design doesn't matter as much. All that matters is conversion. So if they're running a website that looks like it was made in 1998, but as long as they're getting phone calls and people are, are coming yeah. there and they're closing deals, like how well, do you guys feel about that? Well, Greg, our, our, our clients give a shit about their brand and their reputation. That's, what, that's why they don't do that stupid stuff. So like, I understand conversion, but you don't have to sacrifice design to increase conversion. Right. That's absolutely bullshit. Yeah, like I understand keeping it simple. And, and what I th the reason I think some of those internet marketer guys teach those squeeze pages and all that kind of stuff is because what they really are teaching is a good thing. Simplicity. Put your email and hit go, right? Like that's what they're really teaching. But I think they go too far. Like, go, like Jimmy said, go to clout.com at don't be logged in. Go to Airbnb. You know, go to Foursquare and don't be logged in.com. And these are beautifully designed landing pages. You don't have to have a landing page that's ugly. And with this mega photo concept, like Launch Rock, Jimmy did a good job of that. You upload a photo, they give yeah. you a Yeah, yeah it's photo. solid. It it's looks easy, great and it's right? mobile friendly. Yeah. Setting up that page is easy. So I think I think when people say that stuff, like they just refuse to actually address the design. Like they have something that works to an to a degree, but we already know, dude. I know I've spent the last year and a half talking to people in my demographic, young professionals, 25 to 30, and they hate that crap. They hate being on sites like that, especially real estate websites. They don't want to look at it, dude. They just think it's garbage. So You, you know, it, it, you're, you're absolutely right. And there's, there's also this idea of opportunity cost, which is something that's worth thinking about. You know, when you say your conversion ratio is really high, you have really no idea how high it could be unless you commit yourself to actually testing. Jimmy, right? that's bullshit. Hold on a second. This is all bullshit, dude. <laughs> That's not bullshit. No, listen. Conversion, not your sure. point, the other point. Okay. Conversion doesn't Greg's matter. Money. What matters is your paycheck and your fucking bank account. Like, I get that, like, you can build a squeeze page and get, like, an 18% conversion. Who cares? How many of those people list their home with you? How many of those people use you as their buyer's agent? What you guys need to focus on is commission conversion, not lead conversion. <laughs> Jesus. Well, yeah, and that, and that, and that's and that's sort of getting to the point of you know the value of of design more than just simply looking at the raw analytics is that you know are are you building trust? Is someone actually going to want to do business with you? Because at the end of the day, we have to you know these websites serve a purpose, which is exactly yeah. what we just described. Like they are they are either building trust or not building trust. But those Jimmy, I want to talk. I don't have the show notes, dude. You know, I don't ever read those, and you put all this <laughs> that time into building them. But I want to I want to argue for a second. With our, with we our, have we have rapid fire coming up here, so it's gonna okay. be tough. But go here, ahead. The only thing I wanted to do is I want to cover the five things I think a site needs: buttons. So if I'm on your homepage, or if I'm on any page, I don't think you yeah. need more than five buttons, okay? And I want to okay. go through them. All right. Uh, that, would be, that would that, that would have been a good rapid fire. But go ahead, I'll tweet it out. Is that our rapid fire topic? No, it's, oh. it's not a rapid fire topic. Okay. All right, sorry. It's totally, totally different. So number oh, one, he's got his hand up. Number one, yes. search. Okay. Number two, what's my home worth? Number three, contact me. Number four, about me. 
Number five, helpful articles. If you, I want to know from the audience, Jimmy, from you, everyone else, that's five buttons. When you have mobile on your mind, you can't have much more than five buttons. So what I want to know from our audience and from you guys is go to your websites and see how many buttons you have. And if you have more than five, so like what they usually do, Jimmy, they have buyer, seller, search the MLS, et cetera. Well, if you have search and what's your home worth, that, yeah. that eliminates those two buttons, right? So I want to know what is the sixth button because I don't think there is one. Yeah, I, 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 I you know, I, right. I don't think. What do you think, dude? You have, you know, a video right. you can count maybe a video as a a six button. But what do yeah, you think I mean, is I missing? I go four. I don't even do the search, dude. But I mean, I'm as minimal as possible. I'm focusing on buying, selling, leasing, learning about our company and the neighborhoods, and that's it. That's all we're focused on. Got it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's fun. It's funny. You know, on, on your same on your same point earlier, Chris, about this idea of like. What matters in the, end of the day is commission, right? Not conversion, uh, which is a great, which is a great, you know, uh, great, you know, great line. But you know, Linda Davis is 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 is, is, is a, I think a perfect example during like one of these like uh, bar camps. Linda Davis, this is a, as the story goes, stood up and she says, you know, if you have a shitty business, a blog won't help. And I think we've gotten so obsessed and so lost with, you know, this idea of blogging and, and having the right keywords, having the right title tags. Let's talk about before we get into rapid fire. Let's talk about you know what's gone wrong with blogging because we you know you and I have talked about this before. Like we've gone off the rails with this shit. So what is happening right now in our industry and how do we correct it? How do we fix it? All right. Well, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but that's what the show's for. So the primary reason that everyone's doing blogging wrong is because they were fed a bunch of bullshit from people that were on stages. And we can include ourselves in that. Yeah, me too. So, like, you know, Dale Chumley was like the pioneer, former water cooler guest. Obviously, we love Dale. He actually came up with the time, and we gave him a gift card for doing that. But, you know, he did that 365 things to do shit. Yeah. And I think he set the wrong tone for the whole industry. So, like, if I go to your blog and you don't have an article called, like, the five best neighborhoods for, for homes right now in Dallas – but you have a blog about the coffee shop, what the fuck? If you don't have a blog about like, how, like if you're not writing blog content that would be useful to a potential buyer or seller, it we call it pillar content. Five mistakes every seller makes. Six yeah. things first home time home buyers better know. Seven ways to get the best deal on a mortgage rate. Like if you don't have that kind of content on your blog post, and you're like out there doing videos with business owners about their freaking donut shop, that is really stupid, Jimmy, to me. Why are you hating on donuts, man? I mean, <laughs> like, because donuts don't Doritos. convert. <laughs> donuts <laughs> don't convert. Well, you know, well, well, Greg, well, well, what do you, I mean, well, Greg, I get it. Like, I'm okay with talking about the area, but you guys want to only talk about the area. If I am on your site, I have two intents to sell a home or buy a home. So if you don't have really helpful blog posts for people that want to buy or sell or and you go straight to the community stuff, I think you're screwing up a big opportunity. Perhaps. Perhaps, but you are assuming that those people are actually coming to that site to learn about that. I mean, for me, it's kind of like a reaffirmation of an original conversation. Like I meet people out and about in town through other avenues mm -hmm. and then like our website's like a reaffirmation. Like we talk to you about real estate. It's clear that we sell real estate yeah. and that we know about the neighborhood. So that's what my purpose is. There's nothing wrong with blogging about the neighborhoods, Greg. I didn't say that. I'm saying I don't need you, the local realtor, to teach me about the fucking Starbucks down the street. Well, yeah, you can go to Foursquare or Yelp, right? Exactly. So well, I, that, I just think that, that community-focused blogging is garbage, and I would do what Kevin Tomlinson does. I would blog about mark the market and the data and the and whether a seller truly should buy now or wait a couple more months. I would blog about you know mistakes buyers make and the 25 yeah. hottest neighborhoods in Atlanta right now. You know I would blog about the stuff that Zillow blogs about. Don't get mad at me. I would write articles about like go. To, here's a great tip for everybody, Jimmy. Go to Google and put in New York Times real estate articles and then put in Huffington Post 
Are Real you like fake typing right now as you're saying that? No, I'm, I'm banging on the desk. <laughs> so go ahead. When, when, you, when you do those Google searches, go to the yeah. Huffington Post and read the articles that they write about real estate. And they're all exactly like the ones that I'm talking about. They're not articles about like real estate, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's four mistakes home buyers are making today. That's Dude, like I'm looking at the Zillow blog. We can't do that. I mean, they're talking about Rascal Flats selling. No, 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 no. Not the celebrity shit. Dude. I don't like the celebrity stuff. Zillow has a content type. I want you guys well, all to do this. Take it your business. I'll give it back. Hold on, right. Jim. Go ahead. How much does, and then a price, buy you in Miami, right? So you basically say, how much does a half a million buy in Miami right now? And then you basically showcase like three properties that are a half a mil, and then you link to your IDX with all the half a million dollar properties. That, that to me is an awesome kind of blog post. Like, what does 400,000 get you in Fort Worth? Or what's you know what's your competition if you listed a million? I think that stuff's cool, man. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, so there, there's definitely I think what you're saying here, and let's just not let's not you know misconstrue your words here. You're not saying posting and writing about or creating videos about the neighborhoods is a bad idea. But what you're saying is that if you obsess over these things, like you just talk about everything else but real estate, people aren't going to associate you with being an expert. Right, and if you're an expert, you blog about the field that you are actually you actually uh, you know, do business in. Yeah. And a great example of this is the girl Tara um, Nicole Nelson from Truly. I just tweeted out on Water Cooler. She's from Enman, she, dude. Give her the plug from Enman News. Okay, so she writes she, she writes for Enman News, and then she also I guess I is know, but I want to plug Enman. Sorry. Okay, so she is on Truly. I'm sharing the link on Truly, but she writes for Enman News as well. Tara Nicole Nelson, exactly what you're describing without the celebrity spin. You know, five tips buyers would give sellers if they could. And hey, Jimmy, listen, I worked, I worked at Inman. I know all the data. Like when we yeah. write stuff like that, it goes through the roof. I mean, it Ex goes through the roof. Exactly. So, so this this idea of a blogging for 2013. Do you outsource it? Do you do it yourself? Uh, do you, you know? Do you hire someone to do it? What type of content do you create? What we're saying essentially, if I'm gathering, you know, if I'm hearing everyone correctly, is. Whether you do it yourself or don't, you got to make sure there is some type of real estate information in there, and you should look at some of these existing sources like the Huffington Post, New York Times, Zillow, Trulia, uh, and see exactly what's getting the most amount of traction and adapt yeah. that to your local neighborhood, your local area. Yeah. And stop blogging about Starbucks. Yeah, and I have a question for Greg Fisher. Sure. Because he thinks he's so cool and he doesn't have home search. <laughs> sell me dude one minute sell me why can't I search for homes on your site I think that's fucking stupid first of all I'd like to give a shout out to Rar Beer from Fort Worth that's what I'm drinking tonight cheers R-A-H-R -R. <clears throat> cheers to you Chris I've set up other business generation avenues that don't require me to generate all my business through the web so, okay, so me, you're saying traditional brokers and agents should have home search can you say that out loud please no I can't because I don't know them I don't know what how they've grown up, I don't know what their market is. Do you know, I don't know that they work with buyers and sellers who search for fucking homes for 18 Dude. months before they buy one? Am I the only person on the earth who can do what I do? <laughs> I don't believe that. I mean, I meet people through so many different avenues. For me, the web is only a reaffirmation of what they found out in person or what they found out through a referral or that sort of thing. I mean, so if they go to my site, it's cleanly designed. It works across mobile. I've got my listings on there and my contact information on there. Yeah. And that's good. It but I worked. think you're lying, Greg. I'm going to call you out because I think the only reason you don't have home search is because diverse solution shit wouldn't uh, line up right for you. Because <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> on my response. I wish that were true, but you know what? Yeah. That was bothering you. I I wish, wish, we're going to have a tough time true. getting guests next week, Chris. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Greg, I think this is a good conversation because it, it is. is happening online and I Chris, want to bring it we up. We said earlier in this whole conversation, the only thing that matters is commissions and revenue and not conversion, right? Yeah. So if I'm generating the commissions and revenue that I need to do yeah. to make my business successful and work for me, why in the world would I do anything different than what I'm doing? It's yeah, working we're, and we're growing our business. Yeah. So if for me to spend money on something, that's going to create more hoopla and require me to manage it. I have to manage a ton of online inquiries from people 
people that I don't know, when the business that I'm generating myself organically is enough where I can hire people. No, I get I you, dude. I, I believe I, I, I buy head. into that because I don't think I don't think you need a website at all to be a successful realtor. I, mean, I don't think that at all. I just think that if you're going to have one, it should be awesome, not shitty. You know, and, and yours, is awesome. Awesome. yours is awesome, dude. I love your site, so I just think it should have search. <laughs> Not gonna do it. Yeah, and on, and on that same note, real quickly, just two seconds before we dive into rapid fire, uh, responsive design. Just just for those people who are following along right now, it's one of the big buzzwords of 2012, 2013. It's been around for a very long time, right? For it's it's kind of crazy we're talking about this right now. But really quickly, define what it is and define responsive design for IDXs because people just don't know what that is, Greg. Oh, you're asking me? Yeah, go ahead. I'm asking you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, so your screen size adjusts to whatever device you're on. So yep. you have the same West website on desktop, the same website on iPad, and the same website on the phone, and the website adapts to that screen and reformats the contact, reformats the content so that it looks good on there. So the problem with that design now with IDX is like there's only a handful of IDX that even work in that environment. So even if you're a realtor and you can make like a great site and it's responsive or whatever, you don't really have a true ability to put an IDX in there. And that's something I ran into, honestly, Chris. I mean, that honestly is like a, an actual percentage in my decision not to run it. But yeah, I mean, it's a problem, Jimmy. So if we're saying like, yeah, let's have a, a site that looks good on every device, but we can't make a property look good on every device, what's the damn point? Um, and I know it's hard, like we rely yeah. on the IDX developers to make stuff for us and they can't just spend 24 hours a day working on it, but let's, at this let's, point, let's, like, there, there, Greg, Greg, on. Greg, I, I, I'm, I don't mean, I'm going to, you know, this guy, uh, uh, Jeff from Spot on Connect, great uh, IDX developer, nobody really knows who he is, but you know, they're, they're designing mobile first, right? They're thinking about responsive design for the IDXs. Like there's no excuse. If you're a developer, and your designer, like to not think about mobile and incorporate that in your in your spec or in your roadmap, is insanity. You know, so I you know I, I don't want to leave these guys off the hook right now, but like seriously, it's just you, you like if you're going to design an IDX right now and you're not thinking mobile first, like and this is the Boston Globe, right? They've yeah. been on it for they've been on it for for a, a ton. You know, go, yeah, that's actually yeah. a good example. So all you have to do is there's the Boston Globe. Yeah. And look at the width of the headline. So it says friendship. Uh, it's backwards, Jimmy. What the hell does it say? I can't read it. Uh, yeah, I can't read it either, but okay. you get the point. BostonGlobe.com. Go okay, there. So BostonGlobe.com, and then what happens is when you flip it, the headline's longer because they yeah. put more words that way. So see, there's there's one word in the second sentence, but if you go back regular, see how there's like three or four? So so it's it doesn't care what device I'm on. It cares how wide my screen is. Hey Chris, what's the name? Of, what's the name of that guy? Uh, he was going to speak in Boston Reboot, but he he ended up not going. Is it CJ or C uh, C C Chapman, right? Yeah, C C Chapman. Why? What, he, what's up with well, him? Well, the reason I'm, the reason I'm just thinking because I'm, I'm following Twitter feed right now. Not to get off topic, but uh, he wrote a wonderful book called Content Rules, which talks about cornerstone content. And he gives a ton of examples of essentially people blogging about their business and just you know building up your website to have this course on content which is exactly what we're talking about I just want to give him that quick plug real quick uh, all right hey let's just go into rapid fire right now Chris because I want to I want to make sure we cover this now do you can you pull up your show notes is that is that gonna be possible here or because I'm, I'm gonna set this up for you uh, I'll pull up the show notes go for it all right all right, so real quickly, we try to actually, you know, provide some value with every single show. This one's been a great show for us. A lot, of, a lot of tips, a lot of advice, lots of uh, great discussions. Uh, rapid fire is ideas, strategies, tips that you can walk away with that you can start thinking about right away at the end of the show. So this week's rapid fire is we want to give you some places to find some inspiration for great design, great usability and great copy. So the cool. first one is called the map board. Chris, tell us about the map I board. thought I do. I thought I was the one that did rapid fire, dude. <laughs> I'm setting you up for it. Oh, okay. Go that on. was my setup. Oh. Yeah, so the, well, the I was going to I was going to steal a good one. The one you found that I love, dude, is A W W W com. So it's awards.com. You going to tweet it, Jimmy? Yeah, I'll tweet it right now. Yeah, awards.com with three W's. Yep. 
But that thing's amazing. Like, I don't know how you found that, but I, I just think there's so much cool stuff on that site. And it really is, you know, finding your inspiration from like outside of our industry is actually a really fucking great idea. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know it is. Absolutely. So, so uh, first, the design inspiration site, Awards with Dub 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 in it, is a great site. The map board, I think you shared this with me like this week. The map board, Mashable article. Am I setting you up here? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the, no. Actually, I have no idea what it is, but why don't you roll with it? All right. The map board is basically the Pinterest for designers, but this guy came up with the idea, you know, I don't know, it was like in 2007 or so. Yeah. It's a collection, a community generated collection of design ideas, print, uh, email campaigns, beautiful websites. It's themapboard.com. We'll tweet yeah. it out. I, Smashing I, I, I did send you that, Jimmy. I just forgot the name of it, but it's <laughs> Pinterest for design ideas for your digital marketing. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it really is. So the last design inspiration here on the Rapid Fire is Smashing Magazine. You love Smashing Magazine. I love it. Just really great resource for everything design. These guys yeah. just feature so much amazing stuff. And again, look at their website on the mobile device. These guys eat their own dog food. They have a beautifully designed mobile website. Great copywriting tips under Rapid Fire. Your favorite site? Yeah, copywriting. my favorite site for copywriting has always been Copy Blogger. Brian Clark's a friend of mine. He's just an absolute genius. Uh, he basically taught the masses that copywriting mattered. It's the number one marketing blog in the world, and they have some amazing copywriting helpful hints, and you can go right to their copywriting insane, section. Insane, insanely valuable. Insanely. Yeah. Value. Brian's such a good guy, you guys. If you're on Twitter, just say hello to him at Copy Blogger. If you're not following him, if you're not like RSS to the Copy Blogger, you know, website, you're just nuts. It's so good. Yeah, absolutely. It's and uh, our buddies, we gotta give a shout out to our buddies at thousandwatt.net, thousandwatt.net, their blog itself. You know, if you read the articles from Mark and Brian uh, and Joel, just amazingly well written. Articles about our industry, and just if you just look at the the, the the syntax and the way they write, you can begin to appreciate their style, yeah. and you can adopt that same style for your own blog. The next one is this one. Uh, I did, Jimmy. Let, let me just on that same note. Brevity sure. matters, you guys. So brevity is critical, and Ernest Hemingway is the master of brevity. I learned about him quite a bit through Tracy at Inman when when we worked together, and my favorite Ernest Hemingway quote is. Write drunk, edit sober. You know, it's four words, right? And, and Mark Twain, he was another writer that really obsessed about brevity. He has a good quote where he said, I had to write you a long letter because I didn't have time to write you a short one. And, and so we sent an email uh, for Julie the other day, Jimmy, and it took me like 40 minutes to write it, and it mm -hmm. was 112 words. You know, and I obsess over every word. I can't help it. And so I just want one takeaway for everyone to be across your website or your email or anything. Brevity matters. And I learned that from Mark. So that's why I said that. Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and just a, 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 you know, on the other rapid fire tip here in regards to copywriting, uh, DorisAndBirdie.com, uh, a great, great copywriting site. I just tweeted it out. No one's ever heard of it, but these guys are really brilliant. Greg, I know you wanted to add one quick uh, tip on rapid fire about copywriting. You had a good website you wanted to refer to. No, I, I just had a site that I think looks good uh, everywhere, United Pixel Workers. I just tweeted okay. it out. Okay. Awesome. Um, I think that's workers. a good one. Looks good across all devices. All right. So web usability. Continue on uh, rapid fire. Chris, yeah. both of us love whichtest1.com. Tell us what about the sites? What sites about? Yeah, one of my favorite sites. There's a hundred and fifty thousand examples of A/B testing. Yeah. So they'll do a home page and another home page. And the only thing they'll change is the color of the button and what the button says. And then they'll show you that by changing that button from green to red and by changing that button from submit to enter to win, uh, you know, contest B got 89% better conversion. It, it's such a cool site, which test one, W-O-N.com.
Yeah, amazing site. Uh, I'll take this one. Ion Interactive. These guys are the, the, the company that really pioneered this idea of conversion path, which is taking your website visitors through sort of the natural path in which they would try to find the content they want to they want to discover. Uh, Ion Interactive uh, has a b amazing blog. I'll share it. I'll tweet it out there. The last one, uh, Jacob Nielsen with nngroup.com. This guy is the, I said before, the grandfather of web usability. If you are just trying to get yourself familiar with uh, this, the importance of web usability and how it's going to impact your business in the coming years, uh, Jacob Nielsen is a guy who you want to definitely follow. So that's rapid fire for you guys. Matt Board. No, uh, let me, can I give one more, Jimmy? Sure, go ahead. I'll uh, recap. Yeah, user testing. Yeah. Uh, you go to usertesting.com, and instead of asking like your friends and family that'll tell you a bunch of shit that you want to hear. It, you can choose a demographic, so you can say, all right, I'm Kevin Tomlinson, I'm in Miami, I work with affluent, right? Yeah. 45 to 60 year olds who work in these three industries, right? Yeah. And then they will actually find people that meet those demographics and they will record them using your website and they'll basically show you why they clicked here, or where they went here, or where they got lost. So you, you get to watch them use your website and see what they do with it. So that's a good online option. What I would do, you guys, too, is go to Starbucks and just walk up to somebody. I don't know if people are comfortable doing this. I just I don't have a whole lot of uh, in a bit. You know what is it? Ambition? Inhibition? What the fuck is it? I don't have a whole lot of uh, reservations. <laughs> and so, uh, dude, I would be happy to go right up to somebody at Starbucks and say, hey, I, know you uh, would. I just built this website, <laughs> and I just want to see if you think it's good or not. Can you I'm, I'm way, I'm way too awkward to do that. I, I'd go to usertesting.com. Dude, I would uh, go to Starbucks. I would go to Starbucks. I would go to yeah, like... Yeah, but don't write a blog about Starbucks while you're Don't there. write a blog about just talking about <laughs> Starbucks. I think I website. made that point very clear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hold on. Let me, Somebody let me tweeted that. out, donuts don't convert. That was my favorite. Yeah, that, that was a good one, dude. Hey, Jimmy, you had a, you know, you had a Hawaii life in your notes, and uh, yeah, hold, hold on. Before we, before we dive into oh, Hawaii okay. life, real quick, I'm fast forwarding, dude. I'm I'm trying to keep. I'm try, at least I, you know, Greg. At least you're reading the show notes. Let me just recap rapid fire for you, real quick. <laughs> the mapboard.com. A dub 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 awards.com will tweet it out. Smashing magazine is a great design inspirations. Copywriting, copyblogger.com, Doris and Birdie, Thousand Watt, our buddies there do an amazing job. Web usability, which tests one, Iron Interactive, and the nngroup.com. So let's end this show, guys, because this has been a great show. It has been you know, a good show, dude. This you know, thing's been zooming. It has been zooming, absolutely. Uh, and it's it's a big improvement from our previous shows. Well, at least the first one. Let's end the show with giving us great examples of sites we love, yeah. real estate and non-real estate related. So, Greg, I'll kick it off with you. You know, you love Hawaii Life. Well, I'm assuming you do. You you think it's a great site. Tell us what you love about the site, and in, in you know what we can learn from well, these yeah. guys over there in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, so th this almost takes us back to like the beginning of the show. I mean, their site has you know a nice cycle of a couple pictures that they just run full bleed. They have a couple pictures of the islands, um, and basically you just select your island, you go in there, and then it's just properties. Uh, and it's really clean. The funny thing about this site, what they have right now at hawaiilife.com, this is like old news to these guys. And this is actually one of the best sites out there as far as like property search and isn't representing. The, isn't the whole site focused on search, Greg, for yeah, homes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. It's awesome. Ah, I love it, dude. See, you guys don't get it. We'll, we need like a whole nother episode. Yeah. We'll do another one about like attracting a whole, clients that you dude, want. Yeah, I, I love freaking properties. I love full bleed images. I love looking at houses online. Anyway, Hawaii Life is like old to these guys. They're coming out with a new iteration here. In a yeah. So I'm pumped. Kind of I can't wait to see what they do. Yeah, yeah. So, it's still one of the best sites, and like they're not, they don't even care about it anymore. Like they have. No, let me. Bad. I'm gonna say this out loud. People are gonna get mad at me. They have the best broker search in the world. It's nice. So anyway, there you go. Uh, United Pixel Workers is one uh, that I think is like non real estate related that I like a lot. So that's neat. awesome. All right, Chris. I just have one, Jimmy. Can I recommend one? Please. Uh, if you guys have your pen, grab your pen. It's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to spell. We'll just tweet it out there. Yep. Okay. Uh, G. No one's right there. All right. It's G O O P L E. 
com, and that's what I think your website should look like. And and in all seriousness, go to Google dot com, take a screenshot. Go to Zillow dot com, take a screenshot. Just saying. Yeah, you know, there's actually a person at Google who it, her, it's, I don't think it's her only responsibility, but one of her responsibilities is actually essentially managing the amount of words on Google.com's homepage. Because every single person part of the organization wants to get their stuff on that homepage, and it's going to end up like Yahoo.com, and we all know what happened there. So, all right, guys. First, Greg, thanks so much for being a great guest. Thanks for tuning. You know, thanks for uh, being a part of it. You know, it's been great to have you here. Thanks for and you know, and Chris, I'm glad you showed up. Uh, you know, thanks. Do you like my view, Jimmy? We didn't talk about it, but that's Vegas, dude. I mean, that's sick, right? I know you got you got to get that lighting for the next show here because uh, you yeah. know it looks great. Uh, so, guys, thanks so much, uh, gals. Thanks for tuning in here. Uh, you know, tune in next week. We're gonna be here again. Uh, thanks again, for everyone, for being a part hey guys, of the show. Hey, thanks for all the support, everybody. I just want to say real quick, Jimmy. Sure. You know, I've been at this conference all week, and I was at uh, K Dub. You know, last week or two weeks ago, I don't know. And uh, I have never had more people come over and say, I love what you're doing about anything than this, Jimmy. I, I mean, people are bringing me beers. You know, <laughs> people are bringing me like vodka, vodka sodas while I'm speaking. And I just want to say thank you to everybody because, you know, it's funny. I think sometimes we overthink stuff, Jimmy, and that's probably what this show is about. We kind of overthink our website. We drink a beer. We cuss a little and we talk about what we love. And you guys know there's way more polished stuff out there than this. And we're crushing them because you guys realize we just love what we do. So I want to say thank you to our fans. If you've watched all six shows, you know, five and a half, four shows, thank you. <laughs> if this was your first ever show, please watch it next week, every Wednesday, 9.05. Go to curator.com right now. Click on like three pages. We're looking for some extra page views. But there's a button in the top right that says our show. And so if you missed our show on what what have we done, Jimmy? Email marketing. Oh no, god. Inbox zero. Let's Inbo let's recap. Inbox zero. Well let's let's exclude the first one because the first one had yeah, no topic. We'll talk about that one. So we did Inbox uh, Zero. How to get rid of all your emails. That was the uh, episode three. Yeah, how how to sell online was last week's episode. Yeah, that was a great one. How to sell online, and then yeah. what was the one with Raj? Uh, video, you know, video. We were doing video, low budget, high budget video. We had yeah, two Dale Tumley and and, yeah. and Raj. That was episode two, which is the only one. So they're all on YouTube, guys. They're on Curator. Yeah, they're all on YouTube. They're all on Curator. But if you ever, if this is your first episode and you liked it. You know, go watch those other couple because they're pretty damn good too. And just want to say genuinely thank you guys because thanks guys. You know, being at a conference and people coming up, it feels so good. So thanks yeah. everyone. Talk to All you. All right, soon. take care guys. Have a great night.